All right, we left off on work. All right, so we left off doing this problem and we did not finish the problem because we calculated the delta G. Oh, we're not looking at it. Um, all right. But we found it per mole, but we did not find it per gram. So we found the delta G. Uh, so we, delta G was equal to work max, was equal to uh, negative N F E. All right, and so they gave us the E value 0.65, F is Faraday's constant, uh, moles of electrons was two moles of electrons transferred. And so we found the delta G, but the units uh, is in joules per mole. But it didn't say how much do you get for a mole. It said, what is the maximum work uh, when 0.5 grams of hydrogen is consumed? All right. And so uh, what we found it for was one mole. So that is per mole of H2. And so you would have to take your 0.5 grams of H2, convert that into moles by dividing by the molar mass, All right? And so you got your 0.5, so divided by two, so that's about 0.25. And then you have to multiply that, all right? So now you have moles of H2, so then you multiply your delta G that we got last time by your moles to get your final answer. All right, so we got our solution. This is where we got to last time. Uh, we had our delta G was one negative 1 1.25 times 10 to the fifth joules. And again, that is per mole of your balanced chemical reaction, which had one mole of hydrogen in it. And so when we converted that, all right, so we had to take our 0.5 grams and convert it into moles of hydrogen. And so we took our negative 1.25 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole of hydrogen. It was one mole of hydrogen in the balanced chemical reaction. And when you multiply that by the moles, you get free negative 3.09 times 10 to the fourth joules. And so this is your work max when 0.5 grams of hydrogen is consumed. This was your work max if one mole, that is per mole of hydrogen, but they wanted it for a certain mass. And so you would then convert that into moles by dividing by the molar mass and get your work max um, for the 0.5 grams of hydrogen. All right, um, the way we're gonna get our E values is, I uh, don't like the way the book does it again. That's a fine way to do it. I don't like to do it that way. Uh, to me, that is a little confusing. So all you do is you take your reduction, half reaction, and your num number comes right off the table. Uh, table 19.1, that is, the table is a reduction potential. So that number right off the table. All right, but for your cells, you have a reduction half reaction. You also have an oxidation half reaction. There is not an oxidation table, which would just be the reverse of your reduction table, uh, which would have the opposite sign for your E value. And so here, you know, you have to take the opposite of your value on table 19.1, all right? So if the reduction was 0.1 volts, the oxidation is negative 0.1 volts. All 
All right, so I go right to the answer. Okay, great. All right, so let's find the E cells for this cell notation. So the first thing that you have to do is write out your two reactions. Remember, you always start with the anode, then you have your salt bridge, and then you have your cathode. And so oxidation's at the anode, red cat reduction at the cathode. And so you will take your Al, and that's going to go to Al plus 3, plus 3 electrons. All right, so that's your oxidation half reaction. So when you look up the number on the table, it is going to say negative 1.66. So what you're going to find on the table is always reduction. So you're going to find Al plus 3 plus 3 electrons is going to Al. And it's going to say on table 19.1, the E value is negative 1.66 volts. So when you write the oxidation, you write it as positive 1.66 volts. And so your E value here is a positive 1.66 volts. When you do your copper, you have your copper plus 2 plus two electrons, goes to copper. That is right off of your chart. Right off of the chart, uh, it reads, uh, the uh, value is 0.34 volts. So the oxidation one you took and you looked at your table, it gave you the reduction, you had to reverse it, so you changed the sign of your E value. All right, and before you can add these two up, you have to have the same number of electrons gained and lost. So you had to multiply this by two. You have to multiply this by three in order to have six electrons lost and six electrons gained. So you had three electrons in this half reaction, two electrons in the other half reaction. The least common factor between the two and the three is the six. All right, but note, different than delta H, different than delta G, different than delta S. When we multiplied it by the integer, you do not multiply the E value. We multiplied the reaction by two. We do not multiply the E value. All right, and so when we add this up to get the overall reaction, the E values, you just add them up. You have your 1.66 plus your 3.34, and this is going to give you 2 volts, 2.00 volts. That is a 2-volt cell. And when you bring that down, you have 2 Al plus 3 Cu plus 2s yields two Al plus threes and three Cu solid. So that is your overall cell reaction. So here is your cell reaction. And this is your E cell. This is the E, actually E naught cell for this reaction. If we wanted to set up uh, a KEQ, which, of course, the setup for KEQ is the same whether it is at equilibrium or not at equilibrium. K means at equilibrium. Q means not at equilibrium. All right, so we have our products, Al plus 3 raised to the second power divided by your Cu plus 2 raised to the third power. Copper solid. Uh, aluminum solid, th these do not go into your expression for KEQ, which is the same as the expression for QEQ. All right, so anytime you have a, uh, an ion, any ion, you have to put it as molarity. If you had a gas, you would put it as a pressure. So this is KEQ. Aqueous goes as molarity. All right, pressures... The gases go as pressures in atmospheres. All right, so they'll have a negative and a negative. I don't do this. I say this was negative 1.66. I reverse it. I put in positive 
Of course, a negative, a negative is a positive. Uh, I don't ever show that. I show that I have changed my reaction. I changed my sign. I also show I multiplied my uh, half reactions by integers, but I do not multiply the E values. All right, so they'll have all these equations, whatever. You just have your oxidation half reaction directly written with an E value because it's the opposite of the chart. Then you put your reduction half reaction right off the chart, and you simply add those together. So this can be your E for oxidation. This is your E for reduction. Just simply add them up. E for oxidation plus E reduction. So I guess this is the equation that I use. But remember, to get the oxidation, you have to take the opposite of the reduction. All right, and so these are intensive properties. All right, all right, so that means when you multiply it, you do not multiply that intensive property by that integer. So that means its value is independent of the amount of species in the reaction. So when you multiply it by two, now you have two moles. You are not changing the electrode potential number. All right, and so our chart has standard cell potentials. All right, so that is your E naught cell. That little circle, standard cell potential. All right. This is an EMF of a voltaic cell operating under standard state conditions. Uh, your standard electrode potential is simply an E naught. So you have your E naught for oxidation, you have your E naught for reduction. When you add them up, then you have the entire cell reaction. So then you have your E naught cell. All right, and so when we find our E naughts for all of these reductions, because that's what the chart is, uh, it is the reduction potentials, uh, it is when your concentrations are all one molar. So your standard, the E, the little circle, one molar, and all gases are one atmosphere and your temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So that is what that not sign, E naught means. It means that you are at one molar if you are an ion, you are at one atmosphere if you are a gas, and you are at 25 degrees Celsius, and then you have that value for your standard electrode potential. All right, strengths of oxidizing and reducing agents. So we have a reduction potential. And remember, your delta G is equal to negative NFE, all right? So now if your E, if E is positive, moles is always positive, Faraday's constant is a constant and positive, that would give you a negative delta G. So if your E is positive, then your delta G is negative and it is spontaneous. So the more negative your delta G, the more spontaneous the reaction. So the more positive your E value, the more positive your E value, the more negative your delta G value will be, and the more spontaneous you will be. All right? So if you're doing a reduction half reaction, so Al plus 3 plus 3 electrons goes to Al, and your E naught for this was negative 1.66 volts right off of your chart. You don't have to memorize it. You look at your chart and that's what it reads. Now you have a negative E naught value, which is going to give you a positive delta G value, which means this is not spontaneous, All right? And so your Al plus three, this is your reduction half reaction. So now we're looking at an oxidizing agent. And so when we're looking at the Al plus 3 in a reduction potential, we're looking at the Al plus 3 as an oxidizing agent. And we see that this would be a very, very poor oxidizing agent because this is very non-spontaneous. All right, so this is not going to occur. However, if we are looking at Al that is going to Al plus three and three electrons. 
and the E value, we reverse the reaction, and so it is a positive 1.66 volts. Now we see that we have a positive E value, which would give us a negative delta G value, which gives us a spontaneous reaction. And so aluminum is spontaneous going to aluminum plus three. And so this oxidizes spontaneously. So that means that this is a strong reducing agent. All right, so the more spontaneous your oxidation half reaction, the stronger your, you are as a reducing agent. So they're going to ask for the strength of oxidizing agents and reducing agents. And you can write out your reactions. The more positive E values is the more negative delta G values. That's the more spontaneous. And that is a strong, in the case here, a strong reducing agent because the oxidation had a very spontaneous reaction. All right, so here is the promised table 19.1. All right, so here's your table 19.1. Standard electrode potentials, these are all reductions. All right, so of course you could give the same charge as a oxidation potential. And so you would have lithium going to lithium plus and an electron and your E value, instead of being negative 3.04, would be positive 3.04, all right? So you have the reduction, you reverse it, you simply change the sign of your standard potential, all right? So you reverse it, you simply change the sign of your standard potential, all right? And so lithium going to lithium solid is very non-spontaneous, a positive delta G. Lithium going to lithium plus one, that is very spontaneous. And so lithium wants to oxidize. It will oxidize very spontaneously, all right? And so that makes it a strong reducing agent. All right, and so you have lithium, lithium, not lithium plus, Lithium, because you had to reverse the reaction to make it an oxidation half reaction, is a strong reducing agent. So this, uh, when you're looking at your products here, as you go down, you're going to reverse them. Of course, these are in order of negative three, and then they keep getting larger until you get to the positive values down here. And there's another page with higher positive values. All right. But it's, uh, so we have to reverse this reaction in order to get a strong Reducing agent. So lithium is a strong reducing agent. Sodium is a strong reducing agent. Magnesium is a strong reducing agent. All right. And so you're looking at the product because you're going to reverse it and make it an oxidation half reaction. All right. And so when you're looking at this chart, lithium is the strongest reducing agent. And these are all going to be decreasing in strength. All right, and so until you get to iron solid, which is going to be a reducing agent, it will spontaneously oxidize. All right, but once you get down here, now your SN plus two is going to be a non-spontaneous reaction for the oxidation, and it's not going to be a strong reducing agent. We're going to go to the opposite side, and now these, starting right here, are positive, and so these are spontaneous as a reduction potential, all right? And so that means that they're going to be a good oxidizing agent, all right? And so when we go to the next page, when we have our highest values, all right? And so our highest value is down here at a positive 2.87. So on this chart, again, these are all reduction potentials, F2 gas is your strongest oxidizing agent. Because its reduction half potential is the most spontaneous. The larger your E value, the larger positive your E value, uh, the, the more spontaneous that reaction is. And that would give you then a strong oxidizing agent. And so here is your strongest oxidizing agent followed by your S208 minus two, and then your H2O2, MnO4 minus, Cl2, all right? So that is going, as you go up this chart, you keep getting a weaker and weaker 
oxidizing agent. So note, this is a reduction potential. That's why we're looking at the reactants as the strong oxidizing agent. When we go back, and these are negative, we reverse it, and now we have a very positive oxidation potential. And so we have a very strong reducing agent for, it's going to be the product of the, of the reduction because we're going to reverse the reaction, make it an oxidation reaction. All right, so you're going to be given charts and you're going to have to tell them which one is the strongest oxidizing agent, which one is the weakest oxidizing agent, which one is the strongest reducing agent, which one is the weakest reducing agent. All right, so the one that most spontaneously does a reduction, the one that most spontaneously does a reduction is the strongest oxidizing agent. The one that does the strongest oxidation half reaction is the strongest reducing agent. All right, so they give us uh, a list of three, and we're doing oxidizing agents, and we want to go by strength. So we have Cl2, H2O2, and Fe plus three. So we have to go to the chart. All right, Cl2, H2O2. So our number, okay, Cl2, H2O2, and Fe plus three, I think was the choices. Yeah, okay. All right, and we want the strongest oxidizing agent. So the one that reduces the most spontaneously. All right, and so we have to find these and here is our H2O2. Then we got to find Cl2. It is right there. Then we got to find Fe plus 3. And it is right here. And so the strongest oxidizing agent is the H2O2 in this list. The second is then Cl2. The weakest in that list is your Fe plus 3. So if you know how to read this chart, those questions are very easy. All right. Now we want reducing agents, so you have to be careful what you're looking for. Now, reducing agents, and we have hydrogen, aluminum, and copper. So we have hydrogen, aluminum, and copper, All right? And so these are going to be reversed, and they're going to be the strongest reducing agents. So lithium is the strongest, then sodium, then magnesium, aluminum. That's on our chart. That is number one, strongest reducing agent in that list. And then we get to hydrogen gas. That is number two. And then we get to copper way down here. That is by far the weakest reducing agent. All right, and so if you know how to read the chart, these questions are very simple. All right, so here they write out the reactions and they give the E values. Of course, the one that has the uh, highest E value is going to have the uh, strongest spontaneous reaction. All right, so again, H2O2 was the strongest, then Cl2, and then Fe plus 3 was the weakest. And then they do this one, just like we did. And we had Cu was the uh, weakest, then hydrogen, and the strongest was the aluminum. Again, if you know how to read the chart, these are an easy question. All right, predicting the direction of reaction. So you're going to have uh, two reactants. And you're going to have one that's going to have to be the oxidizing agent, one that's going to have to be the reducing agent. The reaction that's going to go is the one where you add up your two E values and you get a positive number. All right, so you want, if you have the strongest oxidizing agent with the strongest reducing agent, you're going to have a very large positive E value. And that will be very spontaneous. All right, so here we have a cell reaction. So in this cell reaction, we have zinc plus two going to zinc, and we have Fe plus two going to Fe plus three. And to balance it, we need two electrons here. To balance it, we need one electron here. All right, and so we're gonna look up our E value 
for the zinc, we're going to look up our E value for the Fe plus 2. Of course, before we add them up, we have to multiply this by 2. Do not multiply the E value by 2. The E value is never multiplied by an integer. All right. And so when we go back to the chart, we're looking for the reduction of zinc. And then we are looking for the oxidation of Fe plus 2. So we go back to the chart, look for the reduction of zinc, and get a number. So here's our reduction potentials. We're looking for the reduction of zinc. Here is our reduction of zinc, a negative 0.76. So we put in a negative 0.76 for our reduction of zinc. Now we're looking for the oxidation of Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3. We go back to our chart and we look for our uh, Fe plus 3 and Fe plus 2. All right, so right here. All right, so here is our reaction that has Fe plus 3 and Fe plus 2, but we have to reverse that reaction because it was given to us as Fe plus 2 going to Fe plus 3 plus 1 electron. So the uh, reduction potential is plus 0.77. So the oxidation potential is negative 0.77. And so this is negative 0.77 volts. And so when you add these up, you get a negative 1.53 volts. All right. And so this is not going to happen spontaneously. This is a electrolytic cell. This is not a voltaic cell. However, if we wrote it the other way and we had zinc plus 2 Fe plus 3s going to zinc plus 2 and to Fe plus 2s. All right, so now we have zinc being oxidized. And now our E value for that is a positive 0.76 volts. And now we have our Fe plus 3 being reduced to Fe plus 2. And the E value off the chart for that one, so that's the reduction potential, is a positive 0.76 volts. And so now we would have an E value that is positive 1.53 volts and would be very spontaneous. So this reaction is not spontaneous, which means we'll get zero products, very, very, very few products. This reaction is very spontaneous. And so we're going to have lots and lots of products. That reaction goes very very fast, then we have a voltaic cell, or generate, we're generating an electric potential of 1.53 volts. All right, so it's non-spontaneous as written. If you write the reverse reaction, it would be spontaneous. All right, so here we have aluminum going to aluminum plus three, plus three electrons. The E value is negative, no positive, because this is an oxidation potential. And so off the chart, it said negative 1.66, so it is a positive 1.66 volts. All right, so off the chart, it had the reduction of aluminum plus three, and it was a negative 1.66 volts. This is the oxidation of aluminum. So that is a positive 1.66 volts. And now we have Fe plus 2 plus 2 electrons goes to Fe solid. And now we have to look up that E value. That is not the same as uh, the one we had before because this is an Fe2 going to Fe. Last time we had Fe plus 3 going to Fe plus 2. All right, so we look up our chart. Fe plus 2 going to Fe solid. That is right here. 
All right, and so the number we have for that is negative 0.41 volts. All right, and so when we add these up, you have two electrons, you have three electrons, you have to multiply this one by two. Remember to never multiply your E values. You have to multiply this one by three in order to get six electrons lost and six electrons gained. And so the cell reaction is two aluminum solid plus three Fe plus twos yields two Al plus threes and three Fe solids. And our E value when we add these two numbers up is 1.25 volts. And so this is a spontaneous reaction. This is a voltaic cell, right? So they told us the answer. They said that this is a voltaic cell. If you have that as your problem, you better get a positive E value or you did something wrong. A voltaic cell are by name spontaneous. If you are spontaneous, then your E value is positive. So this is your E not cell value. And so when they tell you voltaic, then you know it's spontaneous, you know your E value is positive. And so they asked for the cell reaction, all right? So there is your cell reaction. You have to make sure your electrons gained equal your electrons lost. If you were to calculate a delta G, delta G is equal to negative NFE naught, all right? So you would put in negative moles of electrons. That is the number of electrons, moles of electrons that were canceled on both sides. And so here, your N value is six. So N is equal to six moles of electrons because we had six electrons lost and six electrons gained. So the N is six moles of electrons, Faraday's constant. And then your E value is your positive 1.25. And that, of course, would lead to a negative delta G, which is a spontaneous reaction. All right, so this is, uh, well, let's go back so we can answer this question. Uh, we have our chart, and remember the SHE. So it is in yellow. This is the SHE, which means standard hydrogen electrode. And they set that value to be zero. And so everything was off of the standard electrode hydrogen electrode to be a zero voltage. And so then we did the uh, difference in potential from that. All right. The question here says, well, what if we change that? Uh, we didn't make the hydrogen zero, but we make the iodine zero. So we're going to make this 0.54 and we're going to set that to zero. And so we'd have the standard iodine electrode instead of the standard hydrogen electrode. So it's just a what if question. All right, so. All right, so we're going to set that as an E value of zero instead of the actual E value for that, which was the 0.54. All right. So what would the new standard uh, reduction potential of H plus be? Well, it was a difference of 0.54, and of course the iodine was 0.54 higher. And so now your standard hydrogen electrode would be negative 0.54. Now your iodine is set to zero, and it's different from the H plus by 0.54 volts. 
right? And so instead of the zero for the hydrogen and positive 0.54, if we set that positive 0.54 to zero, then your H plus would be a negative 0.54 volts. All right, uh, if you're doing the uh, a cell difference, you would have the exact same difference, all right? So the differences would be the same. All right, so your voltage would be the same. Uh, you're just going to subtract one. They're both off by the exact same amount. And so that's going to cancel itself out. And the difference would be the same value. All right. So now we're going to do equilibrium constants. We already know these equations. We know that delta H or delta G is equal to work max. And that is, uh, of course, negative RT ln KEQ. So we have that from the last chapter, that your delta G is equal to negative RT ln KEQ. This is your 8.314 R value because we are in joules per mole Kelvin. Because then your delta G has to be in joules per mole. And then the joules will cancel. Temperature always has to be in Kelvin. All right, and then your KEQ, anytime you have a ion in solution, it's molarity. Anytime you have a gas, it's atmospheres. All right, and so now in this chapter, we know that delta G is equal to negative NF E naught. And so we can set those equal to each other. Negative NF E naught cell is equal to negative RT ln KEQ. All right. So we can then have an equation that relates the E naught cell, so solve for E naught cell, and that is equal to divide both sides by negative NF. And so that is equal to RT over NF, and then you have your LN KEQ. All right, so using the standard electrode potentials, calculate the standard free energy change, delta G. Free energy change is delta G at 25 degrees Celsius. So this is simply equal to negative NFE naught cell. All right, and so we have our zinc going to zinc plus two, plus two electrons. And that E value was 0.76 volts, if I recall correctly. And then you have your uh, 2 Ag plus plus 2 electrons goes to 2 Ag solid. And your E value here is 0 0.80 volts. All right, so the Ag plus is reduced to Ag, so that's right off the chart. And so you look at the chart, and if I remember correctly, that's 0.8 volts. Your zinc is a oxidation, and so when you find it on your chart, you find the zinc plus 2 going to zinc, and that is a negative 0.76. We are reversing that reaction, and now it is a positive 0.76. And so... Even though we multiplied our Ag by 2, again, we do not multiply the E value. And so your E naught cell for this reaction is 1.56 volts. And then we plug it into our equation. The N value, that is the number of electrons that was lost to and gained two, all right? They have to be the same. Electrons gained have to equal electrons lost. In the overall reaction, you have to have zero electrons. And so this is a negative two. The F is Faraday's constant, 9.65 times 10 to the fourth. And this is coulombs per mole of electrons. This is two moles of electrons. They cancel. 
and that is a Coulomb. And then you have a voltage of 1.56 volts, and a Coulomb times a volt is a joule. And so when you push the buttons, you, of course, get a negative value, a spontaneous reaction. All right, and so when you push the buttons, you get a negative 3.01 times 10 to the fifth joules. All right, so that's very spontaneous. So let's calculate KEQ. And so we have the delta G is equal to negative RT ln KEQ. We just plug in our numbers, negative 3.01 times 10 to the fifth is equal to negative 8.314. We are at 25 degrees Celsius, 298 Kelvin. And this is in joules per mole Kelvin. And that is in joules per mole. So the joules per mole are going to be gone. The Kelvin is going to be gone. And we have our ln KEQ. Sometimes this doesn't work out very well. Sometimes it's so spontaneous that your calculator can't get that high of a number. Let's see what happens on this one. So we have a negative 3.01 times 10 to the fifth. And we're dividing by negative 8.314. And then we're dividing both sides by 298 Kelvin. And so we have 121.5 is equal to ln KEQ. And so we push our E to the X button. And this one is not too spontaneous. This is a 5.79. Times 10 to the 52nd. Uh, once this gets over uh, 10 to the 99, your calculator will say error. All right. So some of, some of these are so spontaneous that when you try to calculate K, uh, your calculator will not give you a number that large. Most calculators will only do 10 to the 99. If it's over 10 to the 99th, it will just say error. All right, and so this is a very, very, very large KEQ value. This reaction goes completely to the right. We can't have absolute zero, but the amount of AG plus that's going to be left is going to be a tiny, tiny number. And now the expression for your KEQ here is your concentration of zinc. divided by your concentration of Ag plus squared. And that's equal to 5.79 times 10 to the 52nd, which means you got a lot of zinc plus 2 and very, very small amounts of Ag plus. All right, so here, this question is different. All right, so now we have zinc with chlorine. Voltaic cell, so we know it's spontaneous. So that tells us when they say voltaic cell, we know that our e naught cell is positive. We know our delta G is negative. We know it is spontaneous. All right, so now it says calculate the standard potential for this cell from delta G values, okay? So this is at 25 degrees Celsius, all right? So that means that we can use the delta G values from the table. If it were at a different temperature, in order to find delta G, we would have to find the delta H minus the T delta S. So we'd find delta H, we'd find delta S, multiply it by the temperature in Kelvin here, and then we could find our delta G at any temperature. But at 25, we can use our delta G products minus delta G reactants. All right, and so when we look up our delta G values, elements in their natural state are zero. So your zinc solid is zero. Your chlorine gas is zero. 
The zinc plus 2 is negative 147.0, and this is in kilojoules per mole. And there's, of course, one mole, so we have negative 147.0. All right, and when you look up the chlorines, delta G, it is negative 131.3 kilojoules per mole. We have two moles in our balanced chemical reaction. And then we take our products minus reactants, and they already told us that we're going to get a negative delta G, and we get a very negative delta G. When you take your products minus reactants, you get negative 410 kilojoules. All right, if you want to put that into joules, which you're going to have to in order to find the voltage from this, all right, because what we're going to stick it into the equation is the delta G is equal to negative NFE naught cell. So what we're doing here is we're finding the delta G, all right. In order to get our moles of electrons, we have to see that zinc is going to zinc plus 2 plus two electrons. We also see that Cl2 is go plus two electrons is going to two Cl minus. And so our moles of electrons that cancel out are two moles of electrons. All right, we calculated this, it has to be in joules. It is negative 4.10 times 10 to the fifth. And now F is 9.65 times 10 to the fourth. And now you simply solve for your E naught cell. All right, so divide both sides by negative 2. Divide both sides by 9.65 times 10 to the fourth. You have a negative divided by a negative. You're getting a positive E naught cell value. And when you push the buttons, you get 2.12 volts. All right, we can check this with our... Uh, values that we get off of table 19.1. All right, so our oxidation of zinc, remember your E naught value for that was 0 0.76 volts. Uh, the chlorine uh, is doing a reduction. So I'd have to look up the chlorine. So I gotta go way back and find the chlorine reduction. And I knew that's a strong oxidizing agent so it has a large oh there it is all right so the one we're looking for here is our chlorine plus two electrons going to two cl minus 1.36 volts off of the table All right, 1.36. And so when we add that up, we get 2.12 volts. What was our answer? Two point one two volts. All right, so it comes out exactly the same. Sometimes you're off by, uh, of course, your last digit has some error in it. Uh, so many times when you do it by the delta G, products minus reactants, and then you do it by your E, value for your oxidation plus your E value for your reduction, sometimes the last digit is different because you're doing it two different ways and you can have some sig fig uh, differences there. But in this case, they came out exactly the same at 2.12 volts and very spontaneous. All right, so let's find the uh, K value for this reaction, the KEQ. So you got negative 4.10 times 10 to the fifth is equal to negative 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And the temperature, we're at 298 Kelvin and LNKEQ. So you take, again, this is very spontaneous. It's going to be a very large number, negative 4.10 times 10 to the fifth divided by a negative 8.314 and divide both sides by 298. And that will give you 165.5 is equal to LNKEQ. Push your E to the X button. And you get almost too big, 7.4 times 10 to the 71. One 
once your E value gets any higher than uh, 2.12 volts, you're going to have a calculator that says they can't do that calculation because once you get past 99, it uh, will not give you an answer. All right, we will pick up there tomorrow.